show is sponsored by Hive Mind CRM. It is more than just a CRM. It is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one CRM. You can have unlimited websites and users. You can call, text, RVM, and email all-in-one user interface. And you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses. 65% of companies start using a CRM system within the first five years of business. Once implemented, the hive mind will save you on marketing, give you more time, and make more money. One of our users had his first $100,000 a month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings. And of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. Hey, welcome to today's episode of the Hive With Us podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Daniel Martinez. I have a special guest, Mr. Mark the Kid Corona. Um, one of the first questions I want to ask you is why the kid? So so really, it's it's Kid Corona, and it's my stage name that happened in radio like back in the early 90s, like 94. So my program director gave me that name because I was also the youngest radio personality in the state. So names are being tossed around and that's how they kind of came up with it. Like, yeah, that name kid Corona. And dude, at first I hated it, but man, it, it, it changed my career. It made me who I am. Um, one of the things about like stage names is you, you one, if it's not like obscene and you don't hate it too much, you just got to dig into it. Cause it becomes your like person, it becomes like your personality. And I know you're not, I know you're no longer a kid anymore, but it's- right, right, right. <laughs> but it's kid, but it's kid rocket kid. Right. <laughs> So, but put this in perspective, I was born in 92. Okay. All right. So yep. you're, you're the radio. You're, you are the kid. <laughs> I'm the kid now. I love it. I'm, I'm going to take, take that name. So <laughs> um, I've, ne- I've never actually had, I always talk to like a lot of like business professionals, entrepreneurs. Right. Never ever had a 20 year TV and radio host. This is the first. Dude, I'm telling you, it's going to be a unique interview for you. So <laughs> an enjoyable one, I hope. When when he first came out, I was like, "Have you done this before?" Like jokingly, because I mean, I can see he's twenty years of experience. So exactly. Hope, hope hopefully I'll get there one day. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, you listen, the podcast is great, man. So I'm sure you will. You guys are doing just fine. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of being being uncomfortable, and then it comes it becomes like comfortable, and it's uh you really learn to love it, which I'm sure you love speaking. Of course, doing- of course. Kid, kid Corona. So yep. were you like, really like a DJ? Uh, you used to do interviews? Like, let's talk about that. I've never talked yeah, yeah. about radio. So yeah, yeah, all good, man. All good, all good. Yeah, um, so I started my career when I was eight, when I was actually 15 in my hometown, right? And then I got professionally uh, at 18 years old. And, you know, to kind of give you the short version of it, I started at a bilingual radio station. That was where I first started radio, was a bilingual radio station playing like Tejano, mixed in with like old school and hip hop. And uh, it was a really, really weird format, but, but super, super interesting. And during that time, I ended up being uh, on a song. And, uh, and I ended up doing like the introduction to a song for an R&B group. And that's what blew me up in the 90s. And that's why I kept the name Kid Corona, because it was associated with fame from the 90s. And people knew me from that. And even today, like people that meet me, they're like, oh, my God, you're the guy from Nasty Boy Click, which was the R&B group. And, uh, and so people still get excited. It just happened to me literally two weeks ago in my neighborhood. And I'm like, that was like 20 some years ago. How the heck does that happen? What, what so that's why it? the name. What city, What's that? what city is this from? I am in Phoenix, Arizona now. I used to be in LA, but I'm in Phoenix, Arizona now. Okay. So, I mean, if you're in LA, you, that's a lot of people. If you're on any yeah. station in LA, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of... Dude, it's, it's incredible. I walked into Starbucks once in LA on Pico Boulevard, and somebody recognizes me from that. I'm like, that's incredible. From all the people in all the land, unbelievable. But it happens, you know? So um, I, I like, radio is such an interesting place because like back, I mean, back in the day, like you would, uh, you don't, you don't really see many, you don't see the radio hosts. Like you can hear their voice. And especially if you listen to them a lot, you'd recognize them. So I remember, right. um, I don't know if you know um, this host out of Chicago, because I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. Uh, Mad Cow. Uh, of course, Man Cow. Mad Cow. Yeah. Mad Cow. And I'm like, 
I, I didn't even know what he looked like for years because, I mean, I grew up in the 90s. I used to listen right. to the radio because my brother set players and stuff like that. And Mad Cow was just like, I recognize his voice anywhere. And I yeah. remember watching TV one day and he came out. I'm like, that's not what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> he has the face for radio. <laughs> But I agree with you. I remember the first time I saw him, like, wait a minute, that's Man Cow? I'm like, no way. Yeah, totally different from what I had imagined, man. And that's usually the way it would go for people. And it's, it's crazy as it goes. Like, even like even when I think about myself, like, people that listen to, like, podcasts for so long, and you don't actually right. watch the videos at all, it's like, you have, like, a, a picture in your mind of what this person looks like, and you're just like, every time you listen to that one person, and you hear his voice, you recognize his voice and all that stuff, and it's like, you see him, like, Dude, totally. I mean, I'll tell you, people used to think when they would meet me, they'd be they'd trip out, right? Because people used to think that I was like the short Mexican guy because uh, I had a thick accent at the time on, on the air. And then okay. they would meet me and they're like, he's this tall white guy. And I'm like, well, I'm not actually a white guy. I'm white on the outside. Yes, but my second language is actually English. I am oh, from really? Sonora. And I'm like, so people would be like, what? Because they imagine they're like, they hear me speaking Spanish on the radio. So they imagine a different guy and then I show up and they're like thrown off like what the heck is that <laughs> so it's the same thing with what you're saying for yourself included um I'd already seen you before so I knew what you looked like that's what I was asking earlier if you were Daniel I just wanted to make sure that was the person I'd seen okay. but it's the same thing if you're listening to a podcast yeah you 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 kind of make up these images in your mind of what that person looks like yeah it's a it's a, it's a cool experience so yeah. You're from Mexico, from Sonora. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sonora. 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 Exactamente. Necesito hacer otro, otro, necesito hablar en español en otro. En otro podcast. En otro podcast. <laughs> Podemos hablar en español cuando quieras, amigo. Okay. <laughs> so for everybody here, we're going to do another Spanish podcast coming soon. Because I, I do those too. I like practicing because like me, it's, it's one of the Spanish is like, so my dad was from, uh, um Jalisco. My oh, okay. From, my dad was from Jalisco, and then when he came to the US, we actually taught him English. But I'm the, the problem was I'm the youngest of four, so I never got my Spanish. And so my 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 brothers, when they went to English school, taught my, my dad English and then my Spanish. And you know, I, I hear that so often from people in your position. You know, I'm like, it's really you know too bad because it's all right there for you and your family, and yet you're the one that speaks at the least. You know, yeah. but I was interested when I saw the hive and I'm like, okay, I see you have Spanish podcasts on there, Latinos, you know, podcasts. I'm like, yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just um, the, the Spanish community is like really untapped with everything. Like mm -hmm. they're the last to get, I mean, I think all their minority communities, if it's not English, they're just untapped. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I, I have to agree. Absolutely so, true. Even, even for me, like. I wanted to provide content in Spanish because I do speak Spanish. It might be a little rough, but I do speak it. So I, do, I like providing content any way I can. And, and I think it's, I think it's valuable to do so. To be quite honest with you. It's a, it's a big deal, man. Yeah. And it's like, you don't know who listened to it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, the audience is there for it. Trust me. I know I did bilingual radio for many years. So let's talk about radio, man. I really, I'm, I'm intrigued about this radio thing. Cause sure. I, I don't know. Maybe those podcasts up on the radio one day. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's already on the internet, but it's one of the cool things about the internet. The 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 the, the digital age has brought forth more avenues to consume, and I think it's it's really really cool. Right. It's like me, I grew up on radio, man. I grew up on radio. <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm in uh, I'm 30 right now, so I, like I I think like people younger than me like they grew up with cell phones like at a young age, like me like yeah, I, so I was 18, so I kind of like really transition. Same. I remember my brother's doing, um, I remember my brother's doing like term paper reports on a typewriter. Like, <laughs> yes. Like, like I saw both sides and I think, I think it's kind of cool. The age group and everybody that's like that, that, man. 28 to like 34, 35, you kind of right. see both that transition. Whereas like my parents, they're like old school yeah like, right that transition was like really really hard and like for me like i saw it happen in front yeah. of us <laughs> even though we have a wide gap between us we still have the same experiences we grew up seeing and experiencing the same things me too i didn't have a cell phone i think till i was 19 dude yeah you know so 
But yeah, radio, you know, go back to what you were saying earlier, you know, um, you know, your podcast, for example, you know, hoping that it'd be on the radio one day, in all honesty, um, I think it's best, you know, if I was in your position to continue doing what you're doing, I think you have more power than radio has, believe it or not. I think unless you're doing like talk radio where it cannot be duplicated, you have more power in what you're doing right now. And that's not to be negative around the industry that, that made me who I am. Yeah, but it has changed, and that's the reality of it. It has changed. It's not the same powerful medium that it once was. Your medium is actually more powerful at this point in life. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. And the and I, I tell people this all the time. I had lunch with a, with a friend of mine, and I'm like, dude, podcasting is it's it's still early on. Like people that that been podcasting since like two, 2010 and like 2010, 10, 15, they have like a really leg up because they're really one of the first early adopters. But like even now, you're still an early adopter. Even in 2022, if you're going to start today, you're still an early adopter because there's so much there's so much upside. And not only that, you still, you know, you, you having to build your, your audience, you know, also takes a little bit more time than it would if you were just to be installed on a radio station, right? Where you have like that instant audience. So I think that what you're doing is a lot of uh, entrepreneurial stuff when you start a podcast as well, because you're building that like you would build any business. You're building that from scratch and you're building that customer base, AKA your audience. So let's talk about, let's talk a little about radio. So you, you did, you're an LA based. Was it, did you start hundred percent Spanish or was it English or you kind of said you did a Right. When I started uh, my first radio station, I was in high school. So that was English. And okay. then professionally, I went into radio when I was 18 and that was a bilingual radio station. That's where I started. Now between that and Los Angeles, I did nothing but English radio along the way. Uh-huh. And ironically, I finished my radio career in a bilingual radio station in Los Angeles. Who would have known? Like if I jumped in there and thought, you know, is this a message from the universe saying this is going to be your last radio station? Because this is the only station I've worked at since like the early 90s. Dude, I, it would have just blown my mind. But that's how I ended up. Um, the end of my career was there. and That was by choice. I'm like, that's it. I think I'm done. Because I was seeing the writing on the wall, going back to your podcast. Yeah. I'm seeing the writing on the wall. This is no longer the valuable medium it once was. I don't think financially it's good for me to continue to um, chase, you know, the radio dream that it once was. Yeah. In all honesty, I would have rather chased going to put together a podcast and build the audience from there. I think yeah. that's, that's why I keep going back to you. Like, that's where you have more value than than I would at this point in time if we were to do the same things. Yeah, that's cool, man. I yeah. That, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate the kind of work. Sure. Oh, <laughs> you're, of course, I'm just being honest, man. <laughs> I'm a brutally honest guy. So um, after you left radio, what, what, what was the kind of, what did you venture up after that? So, you know, it, and I think this is what's great about this podcast. You know, we're talking about entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. Um, it runs deep in my family. From my great grandfather all the way to my uncles and aunts, you know, they've all been in business together for, for or not together, but in business uh, for many, many years. And so during that time, that's when I jumped in and said, okay, I got to figure something out. So I started DJing. I got into SEO. Um, you know, DJing obviously was going to be the next natural thing, right? Yeah. I got into, uh, into SEO, uh, into web graphics, um, uh, building websites, uh, building business or uh, designing business cards. And that actually went rather, rather well. So I did that for probably, I'm going to say about three or four years. That's really all that I was doing. And then we came and I met this guy that knew me from radio and knew me from being on that song. And then we developed this whole trivia concept, which if you want to get into that now or later up to you, but that's kind of where things went in between. Okay. Um, SEO. I love SEO. And I love investing oh, yeah. because of SEO. Oh, yeah. It's, it's such a such an underrated benefit of podcasting. <laughs> I, I must agree. I must agree. It's, it's what's going to, it can help you build your audience or get nowhere. What do you mean? You got to do it right. With SEO? Yeah, what, build your audience or get nowhere. What do you mean like get nowhere? So in other words, it, you know, SEO is what's going to help you drive traffic, right? If you're doing it right, yeah. right? But if you're not doing it, then you're just kind of living on hope and hope that someone's going to find, you know, right. your show. If you okay. don't do that SEO, someone else is. That's what I mean by then you just won't go anywhere. Okay. But okay. that means in terms of SEO. Okay. Yeah. yeah. SEO is such an underrated tool. 
um, that not a lot of people look into it. And I, I, I've, I've kind of like, I'll interview like some of my clients and like, dude, just do it once and just wait, just wait. And then they'll get business that comes in from the podcast just off of the organic SEO. And I'm like, that's, that's the power of it. This is why. Yeah. I <laughs> this is why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and if you know how to do it right, that's really what it takes is knowing how to. Because if you don't know, no SEO in the world is going to save you. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little about SEO. So what, what's some tips and tricks for like anybody that just wants to do some type of SEO like on their website or just getting their name out there in general? I think the first thing is you have to make sure that all your meta uh, tags are filled in. That's probably the most important part, but that's only a small fraction of that. But if you're just trying to at least make sure that your website or whatever it is you're doing goes out there, your title, your, your description, your, the slug on there, if it's a website, all that needs to be properly filled out with uh, the relevance of whatever that topic or article is about. So if you're, you know, you're talking about, you know, pigs, make sure that, your description has all that and your tags and all that have that name somehow, somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the basics, the basics, the, stuff, the basics, the basics, but it can go real deep. <laughs> yeah. It can go really deep. I, 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 I tell, um, I, my partner, cause he's on my, he does like episodes with me here and there. And I'm like, yeah, we like, he'll use it with like uh, real estate sellers. I'm like, yeah, we, uh, we do this all the time. Go check us out. <laughs> oh, with the, uh, with the SEO stuff. Yeah. With SEO, he'll, he'll drive yeah. We'll drive potential customers to our online presence to get business. And, you know, real estate is, is super competitive. So really knowing your expertise in SEO is super, super important. Because mm -hmm. um, you have so many people you're competing with. Those are the areas that are, are tough. Because the other guy might be doing similar things that you are. And that's when you're like competing to get up those ranks and, you know, be found on search engines. It's crazy, yeah. dude. <laughs> I, I, I had a, I interviewed a client and he's like he's like I do this to become known as a buyer in my market in New Orleans I'm like all right I got you so I, mm -hmm. I titled it buying more real estate in New Orleans Louisiana there you go and that's exactly it dude there there you go at its most basic level right but even that believe it or not is not as basic as someone might think you know you have to give it some thought yeah. right because yeah. it's still got to make sense to be relevant to the topic and I think you nailed that one yeah, I, I I enjoy messing with it because like when it comes on to it, like I'm just trying to get my I'm trying I'm it's an exchange of value whenever I do these podcasts. Yes, we're exchanging information. Yes, I'm learning new topics, but I'm gonna put their I'm gonna put your episode in front of 20 different places. Right. To SEO optimize to help you, help me, help us. Absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's an exchange of benefit. And for everybody listening, you have to find a way to provide value to whoever, whatever niche you're in. So if you're if you're doing podcasts, provide value. Right? The yeah. They're exchanging information. Uh, Kid Crony here spent, is spending an hour of his time with me. So we're, we're exchanging value. And then I always like, one thing I love about like podcasts in general is the amplification. The amplification yeah. of time. And ah. that, and it's like, we can record this one hour right now and it can have 2 million downloads over the next 10 years and people watch Right. It. And right that's, that's really the amplification of of and i i think it's for talk radio like you might only listen to that once because it's specified to the right now today a, exactly right TMZ and somebody died and passed away where it's only yeah to today where something like this is evergreen for the next 10 years and you nailed it especially if you were you know for example if you were to sell a product on on that podcast that you're still selling 10 years later and somebody finds that old podcast of yours it's still relevant today and that's going, and again, you know, you kind of answered, not really answered, but kind of, kind of elaborated on the difference in radio, you know, and, and, and podcasting. You just nailed something huge right there. You're right. Your podcast is, this is why it's more powerful. Radio, you heard it today, it's gone today. Your podcast, heard it today, saw it today, it's here 20 years from now, as long as you're still doing the show. And that's where I find power. Even if you're not. <laughs> even, even if you're not, it's true. It's true. I mean, even if you're not, you know. But that's where it has true power, especially if you're selling something. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Jack Trivia. What is, okay. what is Jack <laughs> Trivia? Let me ask you this question. Okay. Have hey, you ever gone out to play Trivia? I am a big fan of Jeopardy. Okay. So it's something similar. I, I, now, I, I like Jeopardy. I'm a big fan. 
Have you ever seen, uh, for example, there's an episode on The Office. I don't know if you've ever seen The Office, but they go and they play trivia. So trivia, you go to a bar, right? Okay. You sit down. There's a guy with a microphone or a girl with a microphone. And, you know, they're starting the trivia and they're asking questions. And then you fill out a piece of paper with your answer and you hand it in. And that's pretty much what it is. Okay. So we took that concept and literally put it on steroids and revolutionized the gaming industry for bars and restaurants. Okay. We took this concept and we created a TV show out of it. So when you go to the bars and restaurants, you see me up on the screens and you have an app and you're playing and there's high energy music. There's me being high energy, a lot of fun questions, questions that you couldn't do through other, uh, other trivia companies. For example, a thing that we call a face match. We take like three celebrities and we use their forehead, nose and mouth, okay. put them together. And you have to figure out who they are, which, uh, you know, all three celebs, who are they? Something you can't do in the traditional way. So there's a lot of visuals that we were able to bring together. So when you walk into a bar, you're basically getting, you know, you're sitting down to watch like a TV show style game show is what you're doing. And that's what we're doing. We're the only ones that do trivia this way in the entire country. And it takes a lot to put that show together. It's not just as simple as, hey, let's get a camera and roll. There's so much behind, uh, behind the scenes. A lot of coding. A lot of coding. Oh, so, yeah. How, how was, okay, so I'm intrigued because it's bringing, it's bringing, everybody loves game shows. I mean, there's people who game show TV all the time. I'm one of them. I like White Love, Wheel <laughs> of Fortune, and Jeopardy. <laughs> to, to, and it's, it's one of those things where, like, my dad used, my parents used to watch it all the time. So it just came. Yeah. Came, uh, I still watch it to this day. Yeah, <laughs> same, same. But okay, so you're you're, br you're bringing the the game show firsthand to create like like a game night thing. Game game night thing. Is it live yeah. or it's recorded? Um, so right it's now it's, it's yeah. So right now it's recorded, right? So right now I I built a studio in the back of my house, okay. so I record everything in there. Like I got a green screen and everything looks really pro. When we first started, it wasn't like that at all. Oh, but, you know, you, you, you gradually move and you, you get better and better and perfect things, right, as you go along. Bringing my experience into it and my partner's experience into it is really how we created this um, uh, just uh, this really pro looking game that looks like a, a little literally a TV show. So it's all pre-recorded and then it gets distributed to all the bars and restaurants for each night. So each night is a different game. So tonight's game, for example, being Monday, right, like tonight's game. Would, uh, would be distributed to like seven different locations. On Tuesday, okay. 50 different locations, but a different game each night, right? Okay. And it's all pre-recorded. But when you're watching, it's like watching, that's what I'm saying. It's like watching a, a game show on TV. So I'm up on the screen. I'm like, all right, here you go, Daniel, blah, blah, blah. You know, is it playing over, blah, 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 or whatever, even though it's not live, right? Let's get into your first question, and here it is. And we get into that first question. Then you have the choice to answer the multiple choice on the app. So in the app allows the accuracy where the old school way that people do it right now, the accuracy is really based on if the host counted the numbers right and got, you know, the scoring correct, which lots of problems with that. Okay. Okay. I've been seeing stuff, sim not necessarily about trivia, but just live interaction type of uh, different. I, I, I went to an event and they had something like this where they actually had like live questions in there and then it popped up with graphics from the live audience. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that too. Yeah, they, uh, a lot of bars do stuff like that where you can instantly like hashtag something and okay. then either your, you know, your picture will come up or a response to something, you know, will come up. Those okay. are, I do like those. Those are, are, are good interactive features for the bar. Ours isn't necessarily, you know, like that. Ours will eventually be where we might even do them live. We're just okay. trying to figure out the logistics of how would that work with an internet connection. Right. If you lose that connection, you just lost a lot of people playing the game. Thousands. Because there's thousands of people playing. Yeah. 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 That's true. Okay. And we, and we do the same thing for bingo. The same thing. We have a Jack bingo and it's the same concept. I go on the screen, except the, the bingo balls are not, you know, I'm not pulling them out or anything like that. They're automatically popping up on the screen. Okay. So it's just, it's just try, you're trying to provide a enhanced, bar experience or enhanced gaming experience in a, live, exactly. in a live setting to that is correct 
That is correct. You're you're on the right track. Okay. What we do is, I think everybody wins in what we do, right? We have the live audience that, that's there. So, you know, yeah. Daniel shows up to his favorite bar, sits down with his friends, and, you know, they order some drinks, and they get the app, and they download Jack Trivia. And then Kid Corona comes up on the screen and starts off the game. And it's good for you because you're going to have fun. You're going to win stuff. It's good for the bar because they're boosting their profits that night because you're there having drinks and food. And it's good for us because that's a long-term client. I mean, our retention rate is ridiculous. It's like 90%. Wow. Yeah, it's huge, man. It's huge. If somebody you know, drops us because they went out of business most of the time. You know, and that's got nothing to do with trivia. It's got to do with whatever else they were doing in the background. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was uh, over pouring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. You know, stuff like that. You're losing profits because your bartenders don't know how to pour. Right. Yeah. But that's, that's that, you know, that's the experience that, you know, we bring along with, uh, with Jack trivia. And it's always hard for me to explain it. You know, I always tell people, you know, if you go see it, you'll totally get it. It's kind of like going back to listening to a podcast. If you don't see the person's face, you're trying to envision what this looks like, right? So how can people experience this? Is it like, is it, you on YouTube or you have to go, can people get the experience on their phone by themselves? So that, so do you remember HQ trivia? Okay. So it, it, it kind of works like that, but on the TV screens instead of your phone. So the answer right now, the short answer is no. The long answer is eventually yes. Uh, okay. The goal is, is hopefully by next year is to be able to go nationwide. Okay. And be able to have Jack trivia at just about every location across the country. And no matter what location you show up to, it's always going to be the same uh, product that's being delivered, right? I think of it like McDonald's, right? No matter where you go in the country, yeah. you're going to get the same Big Mac, right? Well, no matter where you go in the country with us, you're going to get that same Jack trivia game. And that's another difference between us and other regular trivia games where you have a different host. If that host is terrible, then it's not going to be good for business, right? Yeah. And nine out of 10, those hosts are terrible. It's hard to find good ones. So you're trying to provide consistent user experience. That is correct. You nailed it right there. The consistent user experience, they know what to expect no matter where they go. If somebody cancels and they go somewhere else, you know exactly what they're going to get versus other companies. You just don't know what you're getting. So it's a, where, it's a toss up. Where, where are you guys located or what bars are you located? Is there so like a, right, you download the app and see where it's going to be at your nearest location? Somebody. Yeah. So you, yep. You just go to the website, it's at jacktrivia.com. And basically you have uh, all the locations are listed there of where we are. Uh, we're all in Arizona right now in the whole state of Arizona. Uh, okay. We were in California as well, but when the pandemic came along that uh, closed down some bars. So we kind of lost that business. We were already starting to take off by going into different markets. We're break, you know, we're going to get into, into Colorado and it just didn't work out because of all that. So we're going to give this a go again you know, to try and get it out there so that everybody can experience, you know, um, a whole new way of doing, doing trivia. It's a whole different experience. It's, it's such a unique concept. I know there's a lot of money in gaming as a whole. Yeah. There's a whole lot of money in there. Um, are, is your plan to exit or is it just a passion project at this point? You know, I, I love that question because you were talking about that in one of your podcasts and I never thought about it until you said it. You never think about, yeah, this is probably mind blower for you. You think you're going to do this forever. It's, I'm going to be honest with you, man. It sat with me ever since I heard that podcast of yours. It sat what? with me and I'm going exit. I've, I, I have, I, I've not been able to get that out of my head. I'm like, who plans an exit for the business? Like, why would you plan an exit? Like, don't you want to do this forever? Especially if you're, if you're loving it. So do we have some ideas? Yeah. At some point, you know, it gets valued at a certain amount. And yeah, you want, you know, want to sell it and cash out. Yeah. But I think, I think that's probably the most logical but I don't sit there and think about it until you said it. I literally, I know which podcast, I know which podcast you're talking about because I never thought about it either. And now I bring it up when I interview people because now I'm like, it never hit me. So it's probably never hit my people I interviewed either because I never, I've never once thought of an exit before that podcast, which is, a, I appreciate you being a listener of the Hive. Oh, the absolutely. Podcast. That's it, it. Brings me it brings me joy that you found value in the podcast. I did, now, and you, I'm asking you the question. Yeah, <laughs> you asked me that. I'm like, dude, that sat with me, man, all week long. It's all I've been thinking about. I'm just like that exit thing, man. I'm gonna have to say something to him when I interview. <laughs> if you didn't bring it up, I was gonna bring it up. And for everybody here, if you're an entrepreneur, 
you got to think about the exit. And like I said, it didn't hit me. It didn't hit Kid Corona. It's one of those things where like, what is, what are you going to do with this business? Is it something you pass on to your kids? Is it something you sell? Is it something that inevitably what's going on right now with all this, um, the, the boomers retiring or passing away, there's mm-hmm. no one there to pick up the mantle. Literally they're closing businesses because there's no one there to take that business. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. So like, what is your exit strategy? If you're, if you're starting a business, is it going to be passed down? Do you, are you going to, are you going to give it back to the employees as, as ownership shares and hire a CEO? Like what is your exit strategy? And it's something you don't, you do not think about. And, and I, you don't. About it. I, I don't think about it either. I, I'm, you know, when you brought it up uh, and, I, and I'm glad that you brought it up. I think it, it's something you should bring up, uh, um, you know, regularly. at all times, regularly. That's what I was looking for, you know, regularly yeah. on your shows, because uh, it's something to think about, you know, you get so involved in what you're doing that you don't even think that there should probably be some kind of exit strategy. And, you know, you talk about passing away just this past weekend at one of our clients. Um, I had no, apparently he had a good exit strategy because at one of our, our locations, I came to find out that he died like two months ago and somebody else is running. It's just a single owner bar yeah. and somebody else is already running it. And I believe it's, it's his brother. So I don't know if there was a, a strategy there or it just happened to work out, but it's the things we don't want to talk about either. Like what happens if you die, right? Like, you know, yep. not the conversation you want to have with yourself or someone else, but it's true. What if you get hit by a car tomorrow? How does your business continue? So those are the thoughts that went through my head when I heard your podcast and I'm just like, damn, like I never really thought about that. I'm like, but it's true. Like you get hit by a car or, or let's just say you don't even die. You just end up in a hospital for a long period of time or something happens. Right. Or you have to quit. Like, what do you do? You, Cause you're going to let a lot of people down. So you got to have a plan in place. And this, is, and this is a question for you. Like, I don't have you ever thought about doing another, another co-host to run the show just in case so, you know, it's funny, and, and listen, uh, it, it's crossed my mind. I'm sure it's crossed my, my partner's mind a, a bunch of times. Um, I like having co-hosts to begin with. Mm-hmm. I just don't think we're at that stage yet. Yeah. Can we get there? I think we can get there. We're just not at that stage where it requires two people. Yeah. Um, I think we got to get to that point. But yeah, it's, it's, that's crossed my mind. I would love that co-host, to be quite honest with you. That, that's, I think, would be the show completely different and fun, right? But I'm sure my partner's thought about it a bunch of times as well because he does think about things like this, you know. So yeah. it's a it's a good question to ask. Yeah, yeah. no, and it, it, the reason why, like, I, I've I have so the co-host it helps bears like some of the burden. Like sometimes if you can't show up for if I should, called in sick today, I want to be respectful of your time. And I was like, hey, can you fill in? Or boom, we kind of switch off. Absolutely. Off and on. So I've 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 have worked with co-hosts like that, and it's just it's one of those things where like. You don't want everything. You don't want all the responsibility to be all on you as the producer. I agree. And as producer and host of the show right now, yeah, it is all on me. You know, if, if I mess something up or I'm not able to do something, it affects everybody. Right. But you, you've got to have someone who's there that can do the same job. Obviously not the same as you, but compliments. Complimentary. (laughs) Yes. Complimentary. Exactly. And, and yeah, those things, like I said, you know, they've gone through, through the process of, you know, that thought process. But again, you don't think about it till someone like Daniel brings it up. <laughs> and it's a good question to bring up. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, you have done well, my friend. It, it's just, it's one of those things, it, like I said, it hit me. And now it's just like, I want other people to think about it too, because it's, it's something that happened. It's going to happen. Whether now yeah. or today or tomorrow, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, You're right. So how long ago did you start this? The Jack Trivia. So the trivia company was called a different name and he, my business partner already had a trivia company and then he rebranded and we came up with this concept that we're talking about now. And so we started this five years ago now. It's been five years since we've been doing this. But again, you know, it started, uh, it was a rough start because we've never done this before, right? So it's not like we had a blueprint of, hey, this is how you do it. We literally had to learn from the bottom and kind of work our way to the, you know, to where we are today. You know, if you look at our product five years ago, it has no resemblance to what it looks like today or how we, how it sounds today. So I, I think I think what's really cool, and it's not for everybody, but you're trailblazing, and trailblazing is the hardest. Dude, I, I agree 100%. It's safer if someone's got a blueprint for you 
or, or some kind of map that you can follow, even if it's not to the T, but you're right. When you're trailblazing, there's a, a ton of risk, a ton of risk because you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. and you don't know if it's going to work. You have an idea of what you're doing, but you truly don't know what you're doing. We're discovering new things every day. We're right. always discovering like, man, why didn't we do this before? <laughs> oh yeah, because we've never done this before. <laughs> so this is the first time we're thinking about it. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's definitely innovative. Um, it is. How are you monetizing this? So that's the, the beauty of it. You know, people always ask, you know, how do you make money with that? Like, is there any money in that? There's a lot of money in that. You know, it, and basically the bar and restaurant pays us and we make it free for you and your okay. friends to come out and play. Okay. That's how I say everybody benefits. You know, you win, the bar owner wins, we win. Uh, same thing with like corporate, you know, clients. The same thing, you know, they want entertainment, right? And they want good entertainment. So we bring our product out. They're just like, wow, we've never seen something like that before. They're always impressed. Every time we've never seen or heard of something like this. And they love it. And it does great for them. So that's how we monetize through different venues and recently through sponsors. So like White Claw uh, jumped in with us uh, two years ago. Awesome. So now White Claw has been with us for quite some time. So that's kind of like the, the next part of monetizing is going through some sponsorships and, you know, in addition to what we're doing. That's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. How many bar locations are you currently in right now? Uh, as of right now, I think we're about uh, 70 plus locations. Um, we were higher before the pandemic, but yeah. a lot of places closed down. We were close to 100 when the, you know, before the pandemic came along. Uh, but we're kind of trailing our way back up, you know, to that number. But eventually we, well, you know, we want to get hundreds, thousands of, of locations. So are you doing daily trivia games or is it like yes. weekend type yes. stuff? Every single night, seven days a week, there's a game that goes out. So you can just imagine the, the amount of work it takes to put these together. You know, there's a lot of recording going on, a lot of editing going on. But these are daily, man. Every single day, seven days a week, we're doing games. Crazy, right? That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> at all these different locations all at once. That is it's incredible. <laughs> how, how long is the game? Let me ask you this. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, Almost maybe, maybe 140 right around there. You're creating 10 hours of content a week. There you go. Plus editing. Plus editing. That's, you know, that's time consuming. You edit. So you know how time consuming that is. Yeah. A lot of mistakes have to get taken out. You got to make sure this sounded right. Oh, I said this wrong. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. And if, you know, you've obviously done editing for anyone who's done editing, they know it's like, dude, it's like being, it's like working for a network TV. You're putting out TV shows every night of the week. One, th one thing I really like about your, your business model is that you're building up your database so you can recycle. Major. You can recycle Major. use and you can see what, what the top performers are and make, you can get the, you can start collecting your data to figure out what your top performers are. Well, it, and you're absolutely right. We, uh, we're up to, what game are we? I think we're like a game 380, almost game 400. So we can go back and reuse old games when needed. And we do, we'll go back and use game number one. Who's going to remember game number one Yeah, when you're up for game 400, you know? Who goes to the bar seven day a week? Exactly. And you'd have to go to different bars to really experience that, you know? I don't think anybody's got time for that. Okay. So I, I like that you're, you're really building up your moat as you get, as you do more and more, 100%, because you have the, yeah. you have the user experience. 380 is a lot. What, what's that? 380 is a lot. <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Like I said, we're almost at 400 here, probably next week. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody here, this is episode 320-ish, 315 to 20. 300 is a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. We're, at, we're almost at the same, at the same uh, you know, uh, uh, connection, you know, same number of, of uh, episodes. But my, my and here's, here's where my caveat is. I only have like one episode, like an hour and a half long. And you do this seven days a week. Seven I, days a week. I commend you. That's <laughs> thank you. It's not just me alone, though. It's uh, it's several of us involved, but each one of us has a job. So how do you and how do you brainstorm for the sessions for the topics? Is it like uh, movie trivia? Like what type of trivia? Does it kind of switch topics? 
So our regular trivia during the week is general knowledge trivia, right? There'll be like science, math questions, things like that. We have someone who writes out the questions. We have a fact checker, you know, has to make sure that these, you know, because people will fact check you, man. You get this wrong and they're like, no, it was so-and-so and it wasn't like that. And so we have to make sure that that is also correct. So we have someone checking games, you know, every single day. And then we have theme games, you know, okay. so we can do a Batman game. We could do a Disney game. Like we're doing Home Alone today, for example, right? Christmas is in, you know, in the air. So Home Alone game, when we're done, I got to go and put that together. Okay. I got to go record that. I got to edit that. We got to fact check it because it airs tomorrow. So we only have so much time between now and then to put that together and make sure that everything is correct and it sounds good. So yeah, it's a, it's a it's big quite production. Task. It's a big oh, it's production. a big production. It's a big production. Yeah. People don't even know how much it is. They think, oh, we could do this. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> I, I think you're 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 very niche down. You're very niche down. And I, I like yeah. I, I like the concept because I like, and this is where like I after doing this for so long, it's just I like the content producing side of it because that's something you could always you're building up your database and it's just that's always yes. that's always so important because like stuff you can reuse over and over again becomes priceless, and especially digital assets. Digital mm -hmm. assets are priceless. And I love digital business. And I wasn't always this way, but digital business can change people's lives because it's it's very scalable. Correct. That was another thing that you know you were talking about on on that last podcast was about you know scalability of this, you know, which is definitely um, able to do as we've already you know proven. But going back to building the database, you know, you also got your, your email database, right? So we've been able to build a, a pretty strong email, you know, base as a result of what we're doing. But I think all those things play into it, right? You got to have all that data, you know, if you want to maybe sell it and cash out, right? You, if you have all that with you, that's super valuable to whoever wants to buy it. They may not buy it for the game necessarily. They may buy it for what it has. If you've got a strong email list, you've got strong clients, and that's what they're buying it for. You just never know. I just, I literally just thought of a profit center for you. I don't know if you'll use it or not, but you should, you're should you collecting patrons at the bar information because they're playing. Yes. You should sell it back to the patron. Back, back to like the person, the individual? Yeah, back to the per, the bar. So ABC oh, Bar. Oh, gotcha. Main Street and First Street. And they have 50 people come attend Jack Trivia. Hey, you had 50 people with 10 Jack Trivia. I'll upsell you. Here's all their information to build up. Oh, your that's huge. When I mean, we'd have to look at the privacy policies for that stuff. But yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a really good idea, man. It's look at that. I just learned something new. It's an upsell <laughs> because the, the, I'm a marketing person. So I'm always trying to collect people's information, not, not to sell it, but to monetize it because your right. customer, customer list is, your, is the lifeblood of your business. So Absolutely. If, you're, if you're technically serving bars and restaurants, that's the lifeblood of their business. So you can, since you're collecting it, you can provide it back as, yes. them as an upsell. Hey, we do this, this, and this, but if you want to get the, the client place that plays the game, here's their information as well for additional charge. And I, I mean, I think that's a great idea. And I think as we get more sophisticated with our app, you know, we'll be able to collect even more, you know, data as far as, for example, uh, how many people love science questions at this particular location? Maybe Ooh. another location, right? Maybe another location likes math more than this location. So we know to put more of, that, of those questions at this location and less at the other because they prefer movie trivia. So those are like, like again, as we get sophisticated with the app, then we're going to be, you know, trying to figure out along the way. The, the money's in the data. The money's in the oh, data. Yeah. I oh, just, yeah. I just did a podcast that before this one. <laughs> and we're she was... She's a, she's a, she helps people negotiate bills, like regular electric bills, water bills, phone bills, all that stuff. And she said the upper hand that they have is they're, they, they have all the data so they know what advantages are in that area. And they're a data company. And I, I pointed it out, I'm like, I would have never guessed you were a data company, but you're a data company. And you are a data company as well, because you need to acquire all the information to see what location is doing. Yeah. That is to target and provide because it's not even that you're targeting them it's just that if they like movie questions at this specific bar you need to know that as a and right. you can to the bar owner hey the bar owner, hey you did really really well and here's the numbers on this do you want to do this again and exactly 
Exactly. And I think that's valuable for everybody involved, not just for us, but it's valuable for the player. The show is sponsored by The List Guys. Do you need more leads in your local or virtual market? One in 10 small businesses don't invest in any kind of marketing. The List Guys have over 35 plus list types to choose from, and you can mix and match any list or criteria. We also use the skip trace list and provide up to seven numbers and email addresses. Every list you purchase will be scrubbed against previous purchases. The List Guys are here to save you time. Contact the List Guys today at www.1listguys.com. That's www.1listguys.com. Because then they know they're going to get more of those kinds of questions. It's valuable for the bar because they know that maybe their bar becomes more of a theme night bar, right? Yeah. And that's more their thing now. It's like, we have one bar. That's all they do. All they do is a theme night. It's usually like a movie trivia um, of a popular movie trivia. That's usually what they do. We have another bar just wants to do sports. So we do NFL. That's all they want to do, just football, during football. So don't, don't like, again, we haven't collected as much as we'd like to, but that is one of the main goals is what you said, is to collect all that info so we know what to display at what location. That, if you get... That down, if you figure out the data side, that is going to help tremendous with your business because now you can use that data to get more business as a whole. Like, hey, this this ABC bar is doing trivia night or they're doing sports night. Now we, we, we provide these sports questions, episode 100, 120, and 220 are sports episodes. We can sketch this up and schedule it out. We can do a test run, see how it goes, and see how it does at your bar. Basically. Yeah, or even make it like, yeah, that's a great um, uh, suggestion because also, you know, I even take it a little bit further than that, you can also do comparisons and watch another bar and say, hey, you know, there's another bar that's really similar to yours. And I'm going to tell you that trivia would work here, but not just trivia. This type of trivia would work here. That could be a huge selling point for that owner to think, well, it's not just going to be any trivia. This could be very specific to my location, which could be real beneficial. So that's, that's an excellent point you made. No, I, I, I like it, man. I, I like the idea. I like I like the scalability of it, of a digital business. And I, I, I'm not really trying to critique your business. I just, I love digital businesses because it's the scalability of, of reaching the masses. Like, and my first business I started was physical products. And I'm like, physical products, you're always constrained by production, manufacturing, shipping. You're always constrained by all these other factors. Yes. And with digital, it, it, it's literally so scalable. As long as you reach the right audience, and you connect with your audience in, in, in your way, your own way of Jack trivia. Right. I want to go play the game. And I hope people out here that are in Phoenix go play the game too. Cause I, I want to experience this. Cause now I, I feel like I've learned more. I've, I've learned more firsthand than any other patron. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. And, and if you could imagine, you know, what it looks like, you know, it's probably different than what you would actually see, but in a good way, in a positive way. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I would love for you to be able to come out and experience it, you know, at some point or, you know, wherever you live, you know, hopefully we can get it into that market and you'll just be, you'll be blown away, man. You know, I'm, it's one I'm, of those I'm, things. I'm excited, man. I really am. And like I said, the it's, I, I, I commend you for trailblazing because I know that's not easy. <laughs> no, no. And a, and a lot, listen, a lot of it is, is really my, my partner's brain. That's really, you know, helped in developing this whole thing together and putting us both together is what's made it happen. And that, that's the other part of it, partners. So let's talk about this for a second. Partners. So your partner is probably completely opposite of you, is my guess. You know, we, we, we both have, we're both one day apart in birthdays, right? Okay. Or, or I think, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, two days apart in birthdays. Our birthdays are in January. Okay. Um, we have never had an argument. We see eye to eye on everything. We have the same ideas and concepts, and we, we just – it's very rare that we disagree. And if it's disagreement, it's a very tiny one that is like, okay, okay, maybe that's not a bad idea. You know, a good idea is fine. We can move on to, you know, the other direction. Mm -hmm. No, I, I feel a lot of partnerships and I've been in them uh, that have not worked out well because yeah. it's just two totally day and nights. He was with another partner that they were just like this before I came along and he had to separate himself from that. But him and I uh, just get along so darn well. And I think this is why this continues to work so well. But, and I, I don't know nothing about your partner, but I, it sounds like he's like the integrator and you're like the, he's the integrator that actually makes everything happen on the back end and you're the personality because that you is have correct. the personality history where you can, you, you're not afraid to be in the front. You're not afraid to lead. 
you're not afraid to go out there and hey let's go do some let's try this out <laughs> and that is a hundred percent true he's the mastermind behind the scenes i'm the yes. one in front of the scenes yep. you know and i think that's why him and, him and i work so well we're not both trying to go after the same thing yep. right we're really. going after the same thing but a different way yep. separation separation so if you're looking for a partner make sure they're completely the opposite of you yeah, yeah. And I think that's what it is. You, you have to bring something different. And he brings what I don't bring. I bring what he doesn't bring. But you also have to have the same mentality. I think that's important. If you two are not on the same page or thinking about the same things, probably not going to last very long. And I, again, I've been in those partnerships before. They looked good at the beginning and they only lasted for less than a year. Yeah. What is a quote that is yours or somebody else's that you resonate with? A quote that I resonate with, man, uh, well, it, this is old school, man. This is super old school and it might be a cliche for most, but I, I really uh, believe about the working smarter, not harder yeah. and working with him is what made me realize how true that quote is working smarter, not harder. And yes, we work hard. Don't get me wrong, but the working smart part of it is what's helped us not work as hard as we would have to, if we hadn't really thought about things. Yeah. right methodical and that's him he's methodical really just thinks about things and i think that's where they continue to work mm. but smarter not harder man i believe that quote for years many many years mm. so yeah. uh, where can people find you online man this is such been a, this has been a great episode definitely oh, i'm glad you liked it definitely a different one <laughs> <laughs> i told you it's gonna be unique man something different uh so markcorona.com is my website and uh, from there, you can find the, the Jack Trivia website and all that stuff. But um, yeah, markcorona.com or kidcorona.com, you know, either way. I, I used to say, think of my last name like the beer. But now I say, think of it like the virus, unfortunately. Cerveza. Cerveza, carnal. <laughs> corona. <laughs> or as my Mexican friends call me, keep corona. Que on the way. <laughs> Uh, I, hope, I hope everybody here learned something today because I definitely did. And this is. And I did as well. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, this has been a great opportunity and thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for, thank you for having me. Man. This is, yes, this is dope. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Uh, no, thank you for having me and accepting me on your show. I appreciate it too. For everybody here, go check out Kid Corona, Jack Trivia. If you're in Phoenix, go check it out. And then if you are somewhere else besides Arizona, Pay attention. It might be coming to your city near you. And maybe if you know a bar owner, maybe mention it to him. Yes, you can. You mention it. We'll we'll get on it. We'll get on it. We gotta, we gotta make it. A connection somehow. And like I said, we're all here to help small businesses. So for another business to another, thanks for producing content. Thanks for producing and providing something different to the world. I appreciate it. I got you, man. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Go check out the episode. If you like this one and others like it, please go like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. We hope you found value. Please go like, subscribe, and hit the bell to watch more videos just like this one. Mm -hmm.